Hi, welcome back. This is topic 1.2. Um, this topic covers the differences, or basically the basic differences between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells, and how we look at them under the microscope in order to determine these differences. So here are the understandings, nature of science, everything IB expects you to know. So starting off, we have to know the differences between the two different types of microscopes. On the left here, you'll notice that this is a light microscope, while on the right, this is a picture taken by an electron microscope. So a light um, microscope uses light and, op and is known as an optical microscope because it bends the light to magnify an image. This shows colors, which means that dyes can enhance certain parts of it. So here, you'll see that the color is clearly shown in this chlorophyll. However, on the electron microscope, beams of electrons are used to magnify. These are known as transmission electron microscopes, which use high resolution cross sections, or scanning electron microscopes as seen here, which map the surface of 3D objects. They get a much smaller resolution and a much higher magnification, but cannot show the color detail that a light microscope can. So now the general differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. What you need to know here is, first of all, the DNA in a prokaryotic cell is located in the um, nucleus. And it's also worth noting that when it's dividing, it condenses into chromosomes. However, in a, pro in a prokaryotic cell, this DNA is just floating around and not packaged into chromosomes in any way. And then we'll talk about like what each section is called more later. Um, we also, or you also notice that this, the eukaryotic cells have membrane-bound organelles. The only organelle that a prokaryotic cell has is a ribosome, which is not membrane, not membrane-bound. In terms of reproduction, um, prokaryotic cells go through a process known as binary, binary fission, and what this does is this, um, will, this cell will just start to divide in order to um, create two daughter cells, and then this cell, when it divides. It's not necessarily sexual reproduction, but rather it is just mitosis. But in the, I guess um, they both create uh, identical daughter cells. And then finally, the size um, prokaryotic cells are much smaller than eukaryotic cells. So this is an example question. What is an example of binary fission? Well, we have cell division in prokaryotic cells, or prokaryotes, that makes sense. Reproduction of haploid, ga haploid gametes. Haploid is when... Um, just like if you have the number of chromosomes, it's the base number. If you have diploid, it's two. Um, so that would, the production of haploid gametes, that doesn't really make sense here because um, this is usually when you're talking about eukaryotic cells, and we, are, we already know that binary fission is for prokaryotic cells. Separation of chromatids in prokaryotic cells. Uh, but, well, we already know that binary fission is kind of the division, so we know that it's not going to be C. And then the replication of D prokaryotic DNA occurring simultaneously in two di um, directions. That we'll learn later is actually um, not binary fission, but a process that allows circular DNA to be copied. So the best answer is C, cell division in prokaryotes. So now we're going to talk about um, cell prokaryotic components. So now when we look here, you'll see that um, another picture of a whole prokaryotic cell. On the outside, you'll notice phyllae, which are just hair um, like extensions which adhere to conjugation and I mean adhere to surfaces and, and assist in conjugation. This long tail like thing is called a flagella and what it does is it uses long motor like proteins in order to move. It's worth noting that locomotion is the um, process of moving. Um, so then we have a capsule so that you'll see three layers here. This most outer layer is known as the capsule. And what it does is it's a rigid layer of peptoglycan, which um, prevents lysis, which is basically bursting of the, I'm so sorry, I was reading the cell wall. The cell wall is a rigid layer of peptoglycan, which prevents um, the bursting of the cell. While the cap, well, this is that, that's that yellow part here. While the capsule is the red part, is the polysaccharide layer, which um, is just basically prevention against disease. Um, so if, say, another bacteria came and tried to like invade the cell, this capsule would prevent it and protect it. Finally, this green part is known as the cell membrane, and it's basically a lipid bilayer, which we'll talk about more later, and it's a semi-selective, semi-permeable selective barrier, which um, only allows certain things in and out of the cell. So as we move on here, cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is the liquid inside of the cell, where most, in prokaryotic cells, actually most metabolism chemical reactions um, occur. 
and then we have ribosomes. Now these are smaller, the 70S ribosomes, they are smaller than the eukaryotic cells, but still have the same um, job of protein synthesis. We have these plasmid, which is a little kind of ring of DNA, where it's not um, the main DNA is located, and it's actually used for transferring to other bacteria. Finally, this large portion um, is known as the nucleoid and is where the main DNA for um, prokaryotic cells is located. So now we move on to eukaryotic organelles. Now what this kind of does, it's important to note that you create the creation of organelles is called something com called compartmentalization. And what this does is it does four kind of main things. It increases the efficiency of different um, different functions of life because they can it can localize and concentrate different like enzymes or different chemicals it lo has localized con um, con conditions the pH can be controlled and it can vary so if some chemical reaction needs a say a, a pH of three while another needs a pH of seven that can occur it kind of if an end it can allow for damage isolation because enzymes are lo are isolated to organelles, so say as digestive enzymes get loose, it'll only be that lysosome that's um, deteriorated rather than the whole cell. And then finally, the number of organelles and the location can be changed, allowing for like um, I guess you can say um, like you build your own eukaryotic cell. So now getting into the specific organelles. Um, First of all, we have the nucleus, which is just where um, the DNA is located. It's a large sphere-like um, organelle, and um, it has both uncoiled DNA, which is called uh, um, heterochromatin, and coiled DNA, which is called um, euchromatin. And basically what this does is it just houses this. You'll see that this is kind of broken into components. It has the nucleolus, which makes RNA. RNA, which is ribosomes, and it also has a double membrane, not double membrane with pores, which allows stuff in and out of the cell. Um, over here we have ribosomes. These ribosomes down here are free ribosomes, while these up here are um, bound ribosomes, the rough ER. And it's um, so these are ADS ribosomes. They're slightly larger than in prokaryotic cells, but they do the same function of producing proteins for inside the cell. So this rough ER, which is um, a combination of ribosomes and um, the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum, is a folded membrane with ribosomes attached. And what it does is this is specifically for production of proteins outside of the cell. These, so these proteins will be sent to um, different parts of the cell, the Golgi body and other parts, in order to be packaged and sent out of the cell. Over here we have the smooth ER compared to the rough ER. This is also a folded membrane, and this is for the production of lipids for outside of the cell. Um, this doesn't come up too much, but this is a perioxy, um, I cannot even pronounce it, a per peroxome. And what it does is it basically breaks down fatty acids and creates hydrogen peroxide um, to make water. So if we continue, so this is the vesicle. And this is the production, sorry, this is the production of a vesicle, which basically is the um, a part of a cell that holds and transports materials from outside of the cell. So you'll notice that this is actually part of the cellular membrane. So this kind of break connects and then enters the cell. This is a vacuole, which is also a single membrane and is mostly found in plants because of its ability to store large amounts of water. This is a mitochondria. If you look at it, it'll kind of resemble a prokaryotic cell but don't be confused because it's just an organelle. However, its resemblance to a prokaryotic cell will lead to the endosymbiotic theory, which we'll discuss later. This is the Golgi body, which is a flattened membrane, and it modifies proteins and packages them to be secreted, so this works in like tandem with the, endoplas the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Finally, we have the cell membrane, which is here, and the fluid mosaic model, which we'll also dis um, discuss in detail in later units. There's also the cytoplasm, which we discussed when talking about um, prokaryotic cells. However, this, this some meta metabolic pathways occur in eukaryotic, but not as many as in prokaryotic. So we'll, here we'll discuss the difference between animal cells and um, plant cells specifically. So animal cells have cilia, which are small hair-like projections used in locomotion. Uh, flagellum, which is also found in a prokaryotic cell, which is used in locomotion as well. These two differences, they have a centriole and a lysosome. These, um, these centrioles aid in cell division, 
by um, creating microtubules and spindles, which will pull chromosomes apart. And lysosomes are they look dark and they have a single membrane and it contains enzymes to digest. So here is a, a sample question. An unknown cell is observed under a microscope. A cell wall, ribosomes, and DNA are identified. What can be concluded from these observations? Well, if we know that there's a cell wall, ribosomes, and DNA, it's definitely definitely not going, um, or I guess I, there's not too much we can um, just closely, I was going to say that it cannot be an animal cell, but that's not an answer here. Um, so we'll look at the first thing. It can only be a prokaryotic cell. Well, it can be a prokaryotic cell, so maybe. It can only be a eukaryotic cell. Well, I mean, it can be a plant, so also maybe. It can be both, and it can only be a plant. Well, bacteria have DNA. I mean, sorry, bacteria will have a cell wall, so that's not necessarily true. And since these both kind of can occur, these are not the answers, and that leaves you with C. Here's another um, example. What proteins synthesized by free ribosomes are used? Or where are proteins synthesized by free ribosomes used? Give you a minute there. Okay, so outside of the cell after first accretion. First accretion. Well, we just said that these occur in the endoplasmic reticulum, the rough ER. So that's not true. Within the nucleus, well, we never really discussed any um, free ribosomes being used to create proteins for inside the nucleus. Within the lysosome, well, um, that's not necessarily true because the lysosomes, as we go back here, are used for um, digestive processes, so you wouldn't want to digest a protein uh, you just made, so that leaves within the cytoplasm. So this is just a picture of an animal cell here. You'll notice the rough ER, the smooth ER, the mitochondria, I mean, sorry, the nucleus, the mitochondria over here, and just the various organelles. So now moving on to plant cells, they have two main organelles that you have to watch out for. Over here we have chloroplast, which is where photosynthesis occur, and then we also have a cell wall, which is also found in bacteria. And this basically provides support and prevents a um, plant cell from bursting. Here you move on to a plant cell, you'll notice um, the kind of cell wall here, and you also notice this chloroplast as seen here, which is a status photosynthesis. The exact structure of the chloroplast will be to need to be known eventually, but for the sake of this um, unit, you just need to know that it's a site of photosynthesis. So now what are the functions of a plant cell wall? I'll give you a minute to kind of look it over. So the formations of vesicles to transport large molecules. This is going to be taken undertaken by um, the cell membrane, because the cell membrane will have the ability to kind of conform to whatever it's taking in. The, of ex the prevention of excess water uptake. Now this water uptake and excess preventing it is looking pretty well right now, so we'll just say maybe. Communicate with other cells by the means of glycoproteins. Again, this is a function or a feature of the cell membrane, which we'll discuss later. And finally, active transport of ions. This is going to be a cell membrane feature as well. That leaves us with B, prevention of excess water uptake. So now IB requires you to be able to differentiate between a palisade leaf cell as well as a um, here seen on the right and a pancreas cell. So you'll notice that in this cell over here, there's a, there's many um, mitochondrias as well as many vesicles. Um, this so this is definitely an um, an exocrine cell. So as we discussed the exocrine system and the um, function of the pancreas, you'll notice that these are actually going to be functioning and releasing hormones to the rest of the body. Over here we have a leaf cell. Now this vacuole is one of the most important things. Since it holds so much water, you can I immediately identify it as a plant cell. At the same time, you'll notice many chloroplasts over here, which function as the, um, show you, it kind of, it's the leaf cell. So here's another question. Label the diagram of, um, and what is X identify? So I'll give you a second. So immediately you kind of want to see what type of cell is this, since you know it's a, um, it's going to be a, a prokaryotic cell, you can immediately get rid of um, histones and endoplasmic reticulum and chromosome is going to be this nucleoid region. So this is an example of some part four, I mean part, part two questions that are both, that are worth four marks. So here you're going to draw a label diagram of a eukaryotic plant cell as seen in an electron micrograph. This is going to be similar to this palisade leaf cell. 
So if we go back, you're going to want to maybe draw the cell wall first, which it kind of doesn't matter, but just make sure that it's kind of rigid. And then you can kind of draw your cell membrane here. Remember to label them. I'm not going to write them because it's kind of hard to write. But here you'll have that. You'll have the cell membrane. And then on a electron micrograph, you'll definitely be able to see this vacuole. So you're definitely going to want to implement a vacuole when trying to draw a plant cell. Maybe you can even draw the nucleus. Now on an electron micrograph, you're not going to be able to see every single one of the organelles. So you can maybe try to attempt to draw both the mitochondria and the chloroplast. However, those won't be as easily discernible in a, an electron micrograph. It's mainly the cell wall, the cell membrane, this vacuole, this nucleus that are really being seen. But also it's good to add the, any mitochondria and chloroplasts. So that should be it, pretty much all you need for that question. So now draw a labeled prokaryotic cell. So now while you're not limited to this um, electron micrograph um, format, you can really take more free reign and draw it with every organelle that you know. So we'll have um, this three-layered um, kind of protection. If I can kind of draw it here. So at the outside, we'll have the capsule, and the second layer will have the cell wall, and on the third, we'll have the, mem the plasma membrane. Projecting, we'll have the flagella, and you can also draw, um, that's kind of bad, I should, probably shouldn't, oh, I don't want to erase it all. But instead of drawing that, maybe draw it more um, like pair-like extensions um, in order to draw the, the pili. And then you also, on the inside, you can draw this nucleoid region all the DNA is located, maybe a little plasmid, the 70S ribosomes. Um, you can even label the cytoplasm. And that pretty much covers everything you need for a prokaryotic cell.